Hey everyone, this video is about the TI-58C, a popular LED programmable calculator from 1978 that featured continuous memory and pluggable ROM modules. And it was part of a generation of TI programmable calculators that also included the 58, which is basically the same model without continuous memory, and the 59, which included more RAM and a magnetic card reader. And the 58C was released in an era of intense competition between HP and Texas Instruments. In 1972, HP had released the HP 35, uh, the first pocket scientific calculator, and only a year later TI followed that with a very similar device, the SR50. Then in 1974, HP released the remarkable HP 65, the first programmable pocket ca calculator that also supported a magnetic card system for program storage. But TI followed that only a year later with their first programmable, the SR50, which also supported uh, magnetic cards. And then in 1976, HP released the HP 67, an even more powerful programmable, and also the HP 25C, the first HP calculator with continuous CMOS memory that retained its contents when powered off. And so then in May 1977, uh, TI released the, both the TI 58 and 59. Uh, and the 59 was the more expensive model, uh, as I said, with magnetic card storage and extra RAM. Uh, but neither supported continuous memory, which was particularly a problem uh, for the 58, uh, which had a large uh, program memory store, but no way to uh, store and retrieve programs. And so when the TI-58C was, uh, was introduced in 1978 for the price of $90, less than a quarter of the price of the HP-67 and less than half the price of the HP-25C, it was justifiably popular. Uh, and having that combination of continuous memory and instantly accessible ROM modules made it really practical, and for many even uh, more practical than the 59, which required restoring data from magnetic cards each time that was turned on. But as we'll see uh, with the 58C and uh, the rest of the family, a big weakness was its unreliable hardware. Uh, to the point that it's actually very unusual these days to find examples that work perfectly. And this particular 58C unfortunately exhibits com uh, some of the common issues, and I'll talk more about those later. So the 58C case is plastic with sloping faces and fairly reminiscent of earlier TI calculators and also the HP 35. At its top it has an on-off slider, uh, and there's a 10-digit LED display. Uh, below which is a slot for program reference cards which slide in and out and the key function of these is to explain the mappings of the top row of soft keys on the keyboard. Uh, the keyboards on the 5859 series are notoriously unreliable uh, with both missing key presses and repeating key presses so uh, let, let, I'll try and type from 1 to 9 Yeah, and you can see uh, a couple of the keys got repeated. Uh, there's both a second function key uh, and an inverse key, which I'll talk more about later. On the back we can see a rectangular hole where the battery pack usually sits. Uh, this particular 58C has an issue that's common where the uh, PCB terminals uh, that the battery pack usually sits on are partly broken, so I'm actually using alligator clips uh, instead to connect uh, four, uh, three AA batteries. And there are four feet to stop the calculator slipping, uh, this one's fallen off. Uh, and there's also a little cover uh, to access um, the slot for ROM module, so um, I can insert the master library module and um, Put the cover back on, like so. This is a picture of the main PCB from the 58C. Of course, prior to the TI-66 in 1983, Texas Instruments calculators were all fabricated by TI and uh, used predominantly TI chipsets. So on the left are two uh, SN27882N display buffer chips. 
And in the middle of the PCB, uh, you can see the two power contact, uh, contacts that the battery package usually rests on uh, that are damaged on my device. Uh, there's also the strip of gold contacts uh, that were allowed uh, the, the device to interface to a PC100C printer cr uh, cradle. And on the far right, uh, two TM501NL arithmetic CPUs. I presume one was for interactive calculations and the other was for running programs. There are also two TI ROM chips and a Toshiba SRAM chip. On the right you can also see the eight gold contacts uh, for that pluggable ROM module uh, that um, I just inserted. And so of course the 58C is an algebraic calculator so to calculate 2 plus 3 times 4 we can just type that in and then hit equals. And an interesting feature of this era of Texas Instruments calculators <clears throat> is the inverse button, uh, which modifies the function associated with a key uh, to its inverse. So a simple example is, let's take the natural log of 10. Uh, and we can actually get back to 10 again by hitting inverse natural log. Uh, which raises e to the power of that number. And inverse was first included in the SR52, but it was phased out after the TI-66 in 1983. <clears throat> and I think it's partly because it's not always obvious which operations it applies to. So an example is, say we type uh, 9 and then x squared. Uh, then you might think that we can hit inverse x squared and get the square root. Uh, but the inverse key doesn't uh, do anything. And I don't know if this is because uh, there's a square root button already on the calculator or because uh, we could have also squared negative 9 to get 81 and so the square root would not uh, be the same as the inverse. Um, another um, interesting aspect of the inverse button is it actually combines with the uh, second function button on some operations. So uh, let's find the sign of 45 degrees. So we enter 45 uh, and then second function sign. And we can find the inverse of that by hitting uh, inverse second function sign. Uh, and uh, we can also, we could have actually switched the buttons around um, and typed in uh, second function inverse sign. Uh, of course, inverse only applies to single argument operators, so you can't type, say, inverse multiply to get divide. Uh, but other than the inverse key, the basic usage of the 58C is very much um, how you would expect. One of the best features of the 5859 series was their support for pluggable ROM modules. And there are at least 16 standard modules published by Texas Instruments, but there were just as many published by third-party vendors. And they all used uh, the user-defined keys on uh, the top row of the keyboard fairly extensively. Uh, the master library ROM was included with every uh, 58C and came with this uh, in this really attractive folder and that contained uh, the hardware module itself and you can see the gold contacts on the back. There's also a compact reference card and to make programs easier to use plastic cards were provided that are the same size as magnetic cards and they slot it into the calculator so uh, let's pick a reference card for a program to try out so we'll pick uh, combinations, permutations and factorials and it inserts into the calculator like this. So I've put the master library card back in and we can select program uh, 16 using second function program. And uh, so now we can calculate a factorial and uh, to do this we enter our value for n, so let's say 10 uh, and hit the uh, soft key for n. And now we can hit uh, the factorial soft key. 
it looks right. And the master li library module supports a bunch of useful programs such as complex and matrix operations, um, a functional solver, and Simpton Simpson's method for integral approximation. Uh, but some of these require the user to write their own custom program, so we'll talk about that now. And the way programming works on the 58C is similar to other keystroke programmable algebraic calculators. So let's start with my favourite simple example, the full distance equation. The distance an object falls under gravity in time t. And so we'll start with uh, CP to clear program memory. We press enter, uh, learn to enter learn mode. And we'll start with a program label so we can run the program using a soft key. So label A. And we'll assume the time in seconds has already been entered, so we just need to square it and then multiply by 4.9 and then hit equals. Uh, and then we need to hit run stop to terminate the program. And we'll hit learn again uh, to exit learn mode. And if we wanted to edit the program, uh, we can hit learn mode again and use uh, BST to step backwards uh, and SST to step forwards. And there was a kind of handy keyboard overlay provided uh, that shows you the key codes. For example, the first instruction of the program is 76, which is the label key. And so now to run the program, uh, we switch out of learn mode, hit clear, and we'll enter our time in seconds, so let's say 10, uh, and hit A, so that's 490 metres. So here's a more complex example of a program to solve the end queen's chess puzzle, and you can see the usual store and recall operations, the use of X and T registers, and of course the 58C supported conditional and non-conditional jump operations and subroutines. Uh, you can also see indirect addressing uh, via the ind instruction. And there are also uh, 40 special control operations that were available via a special uh, op instruction. And a lot of these allowed the 58C to control a printer in various ways, but op20 allows us to uh, increment data registers zero. And it was um, uh, possible to create loops uh, with any register. So I'm not going to run this program because it takes 58 minutes to complete. But you can see that the 58C supported a fairly advanced programming model for its time. And the 58 and 59 also support a number of undocumented features. Uh, the most famous is the HIR instruction, which allows the programmer to access eight hierarchy registers. And these were used for various functions, but most important was to keep track of intermediate values while an algebraic expression was entered. Uh, so for example, when we enter 2 plus 3 times 4, um, the 2 is placed in hierarchy register 1 and the 3 is placed in hierarchy register 2. And um, the HIR command allows us to perform various functions on these registers, so store and recall some and so on. So this is a program which recalls HIR register 2. And um, so there's a label um, associated with the soft key and then the HIR instruction takes a two-digit opcode, so it's, or argument, I should say. Uh, the first digit is the operation, so one is for recall, and the second digit is the register, so in this case, register two. Uh, but uh, there's that no key on the keyboard corresponding to HIR, so we can't enter it in a program normally. Uh, we'll have to use a trick to enter arbitrary program codes. And to do that, we'll supply our opcode as an argument for the store command, and then go back and uh, delete the store opcode. And so the opcode for HIR is 82. And so let's uh, clear our program memory and go into learn mode again, and we'll set up our label A. And uh, we'll start with store 82. And uh, we can just hit the B key, uh, f because that has the key code 12, and then run stop. 
And now we'll want to go back and uh, delete the opcode 42, which corresponds to store. So we go back step, back step, back step, back step, uh, and then hit delete. And we'll, uh, we can view the program now. So there's the, the label A, uh, there's HIR instruction, uh, there's the argument, and then there's run stop. And so uh, now let's just enter that expression again and hit equals. And if we hit A, uh, we'll see that 3 was indeed put in register, uh, HIR register 2. And you can have a lot of fun with the undocumented features on this calculator. And so in summary, the TI-58C was a great calculator for its time, and it and the 59 were better than the HP-67 in many respects. They had more memory, uh, solid-state ROM modules, more functions, and even printing capability with alpha characters. Unfortunately, they were let down a lot by their unreliable hardware, and the keyboard in particular often suffered from key bounce, as we've seen. And the series had uh, memory reliability issues as well. And so if you're collecting this era of TI calculator, you really need to be careful what you're buying. Uh, but overall, the series was a high point for Texas Instruments and they're arguably the best calculators on the market at the time, at least until HP released the 41C in 1979. And the 58C is quite nostalgic for me because my father had one and I often played with it as a kid. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you have, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.